Thank you so much for being a part of our journey of looking at COVID uh, through the lens of faith. This is our third week. We've looked at the trend of depersonalization that was intensified uh, uh, during our journey with COVID. And then we looked last week at the experience of darkness that was really caused by the pandemic. This week we're exploring uh, another condition that we found ourselves in that was caused by the pandemic and what occurred as a result of the, and we call it bewilderment. One of the best descriptions of this bewilderment was, quote, for two years I felt like I was in a boat without a motor or paddles on a very windy day, end of quote. Bewilderment is a sense of having no control over direction in life and no power to move. This was true for individuals. It's also true for agencies, local governments, school boards, homes, deliverers of health care. There were constant changes in analysis and advice and responses to the analysis and, and daily advice often differed and therefore individuals were offended by responses from others who were different than their own. Life seemed to have no rhyme, no reason. <laughs> Confusion reigned. Now, in this state of confusion, the state of bewilderment, a phenomenon occurred, which is called opportunism. Opportunism for many became the name of the game. Many warned us during the pandemic that opportunism was knocking on every door. For example, when much needed rent assistance became available to protect owners of rental property in which persons lived who had no income, owners were walking away from managing the property and often walking away from ownership because they had no income to pay their monthly loan payments. Opportunists took advantage by applying for rent assistance even though their income was not affected by COVID. Hmm. For example, when assistance became available to employers, to maintain staff because their products were not selling and their services were not needed, opportunists took advantage by applying for these funds even though their revenue had not declined or businesses were created on paper, never ever existing in order to receive these funds. For instance, when certain essentials for medical care were needed in quantity never before experienced or expected, opportunists took advantage by limiting accessibility and raising prices which escalated the cost of agencies who needed these supplies to take care and save lives. Now, simply stated, opportunism is a willingness to take what is not yours 
for one's own benefit, period. In street language, opportunism is highway robbery, when the robbers are in complete control. Um, as the public awareness of the pandemic is waning early in 2023, almost daily the breaking news is another story of opportunism. Charges of fraud being brought against opportunists who are being named, charged, and caught. Opportunism during the pandemic was the experience of a few taking advantage of the community, taking advantage of the nation, taking advantage of next door neighbors, and the bewilderment of the pandemic caused opportunism to become a common practice rather than occasional malpractice. I want to repeat that. The bewilderment and confusion of the pandemic caused opportunism to become a common practice rather than an occasional malpractice. You see, often opportunism occurs when laws are not developed concurrently with responses to a crisis emergency like COVID. Therefore, oftentimes opportunistic practices occur that are no, not criminal because no laws were broken but they are morally wrong. You see, often, as, as just do it in a time, opportunism is legal. No laws are broken. But just because an act is legal does not make it right. Just because an act is legal does not make it right. And that's what opportunism is often all about. This is looking at COVID through the lens of faith. Faith does not understand life to be a game of taking advantage, determined by laws. Life, according to faith, is a journey determined by values of respect, integrity, and care. These are the values necessary for human community. Life together, not taking advantage of others, for the sake of oneself. This is a message that is desperately needed in a time of global bewilderment and confusion, 2020 to 2023. Opportunism was far too often the name of the game. Yep, but what is the faith response to the opportunity of opportunism? It is to look at the opportunity to serve. Opportunity to serve rather than opportunism of taking advantage. Indeed, these are the stories that must be told and cherished by those of us of faith. Story after story, 
persons of faith chose to seize the opportunity to serve others in face of the swell of opportunism. Restaurant owners depleting their assets by serving food to hungry neighbors even though they could not be open for business. That's seizing the opportunity to serve. Staffs of healthcare agencies, um, persons dying from COVID often because they cared for those who needed their care. That's seizing the opportunity to serve in the name of agape love. Nations giving free vaccinations that they had money to purchase given to nations who had no money to buy the vaccines for their own citizens. That's seizing the opportunity to serve others rather than opportunistically taking advantage for oneself and one's own nation. Yes, faith through <clears throat> the lens of faith as we look at COVID, faith found a voice in the lives of servants who chose bewilderment as a time, as an opportunity to serve. Yes, faith <laughs> provided power for the boat and the seamen on the windswept ocean of confusion. Listening to the cries of suffering souls instead of the whims and fancies traveling across the globe through social media, seizing bewilderment as a time for opportunism. One of my favorite hymns is no longer in the hymnal. Written by Philip Bliss, and Phil was a watchman on a, a tower near the seas of Nova Scotia. It was his task every night to light the lights along the shore so a boat coming in late at night could see the pathway to safety. The storm raged all day. All the boats that had left were back in harbor and Philip Les knew that there were no boats left on the sea. He didn't like the lights that night and woke up the next morning to see the remains of the boat that had been wrecked against the rocks by the wind and the body of the seaworthy persons on the boat dead in the water to his eyesight. And he wrote the words of the hymn, let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the way some poor, fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. Indeed, in the time of bewilderment and confusion of the COVID, the faith response was very clear. No to opportunism of taking advantage to others. Yes, as an opportunity to serve others 
in the name of agape love. Indeed, the faith response to a time of confusion and bewilderment is to let the lower lights be burning. Send a gleam across a wave, some poor fainting person you may rescue, you may save by your servanthood of agape love. A lot to think about this time of COVID and I have a couple of questions that might stimulate your thought in our conversation. First of all, what are your stories during COVID of human communities and individuals choosing bewilderment as an opportunity to serve rather than opportunism? Secondly, what are your 2020 to 2023 illustrations of practices which were legal but morally wrong? Thank you for participating with us as we dig deeper together.